called crazy, censored, blacklisted, and beyond. Americans are being rooted out and punished for their support of President Trump. This vile treatment smacks of McCarthyism, with even more disturbing global parallels. Dale Hurd brings us this alarming report. This was an attorney for PBS caught on camera saying the children of Trump supporters should be taken away from their parents and put in re-education camps. He was later fired, while voices in the media still call for Trump supporters to be deprogrammed. There are millions of Americans, um, almost all white, almost all Republicans, who somehow need to be deprogrammed. And the question is, how are we going to really almost deprogram these people who have signed up for the cult of Trump? Trump supporters are also being called mentally ill and are being censored, doxxed, deplatformed, blacklisted, and demonetized. It's giving some who have lived in communist countries flashbacks. For those who lived under communist dictatorships, What's happening in America has some disturbing parallels. Chinese pastor Bob Fu was a student leader during the Tiananmen Square pro-democracy demonstrations in 1989. He was also a proud attendee of the January 6th Trump rally on the National Mall. He says the call to re-educate and deprogram Trump supporters is straight out of the Chinese Communist Party playbook. It's absolutely uh, these kind of tactics. Uh, they all requires forced conformity. If you don't comply, then you will be punished. Elizabeth Rogliani's family had to flee Venezuela when Hugo Chavez took power. Her video warning last year to Americans about the similarities between the Antifa and Black Lives Matter rioting and what happened in Venezuela went viral. I have already lived through this thing when I was living in Venezuela. She says the labeling of Trump supporters as potential domestic terrorists was a tactic Hugo Chavez used to stigmatize his political opposition. Calling out opposition or Republicans as terrorists or fascists, that is the kind of language I saw a lot. Uh, late President Hugo Chavez used to call us fascists and terrorists as well. Rogliani says one ominous sign for America has been all the conservatives flocking to more secure messaging platforms like Telegram, because that's exactly what happened in Venezuela when the Democratic opposition was deplatformed and opposition leaders began to be arrested. We jumped into Telegram really early on, so I had it for years. I find that very interesting how it's happening so fast here. Jason Poblet's grandfather had to flee Cuba when Fidel Castro took power. Poblet, an attorney who has worked in Congress, is president of the Global Liberty Alliance and says what happened in Cuba is replaying in the United States. Dale, it's painful to watch. It's not something that I ever thought I would see in the United States, in Cuba, the socialist facilitators had been laying the groundwork. And by the time Fidel Castro rolled in, uh, they had already laid that framework in place to take the government over. If his grandfather, who loved America deeply, was alive today to see how Trump supporters are being demonized, he would be scared. And then he would tell me, hey, Jason, what are you doing about it? <laughs> because you can't go anywhere. I mean, this is it. There's nowhere for us to go. Dale Hurd joins us to provide more insights. You also talked to German evangelist Heidi Munt, Dale, for this story. So what did she tell you about her experience uh, growing up in East Germany, the parallels with what's happening today? She was very politically incorrect, Gary. Um, the first thing she said was, of course, we know East Germany was called the German Democratic Republic. And she said, uh, your Democrats remind me of the old East Germany. Uh, she feels like it's the same spirit. Uh, people calling themselves Democrats, but they're really socialists or even communists. So yeah, she had a lot of talk like that. She, she had grown up an ardent communist, turned against the government, and then paid the price. Her career came to a dead stop. She couldn't work anymore. She talked about how people were taken to mental hospitals as a form of punishment, the dissidents, which, of course, we know was widespread across the Soviet bloc, and how they took, they took children away from dissidents, like uh, my story mentioned they'd like to do to Trump supporters. 
And Democrats make no secret deal of their desire to prevent Donald Trump from running for office again. And I'm sure that reminds you of the tactics of Stalin, the poisoning and imprisonment of Putin's opponent, Alexei Navalny, and recently in Russia. And tell, tell us more about that. Well, you know what it says? It says, just like a communist dictator who wasn't elected, they're paranoid that they wouldn't win another election against Trump. There's another big parallel in Latin America, the comparison of Antifa here in the USA with militants in Venezuela known as the Colectivos. Tell us about them. Yeah. Yeah. They look surprisingly like Antifa, um, you know, masks, except these guys just carried guns openly. They rode around on scooters and terrorized uh, the Democratic opposition. They were the muscle of Hugo Chavez's revolution, just as some argue Antifa is the muscle of the left in this country. Um, you know, making it plain to shop owners, to business people, to residents in whatever city that if, if you're a Trump supporter or you, you're not, you know, a, going along with our party line that you, you may take a physical toll for it, or your house may be attacked, you may be beat up. Okay, CBN News Senior International Correspondent Dale Hurd, thanks for your excellent story and for providing those additional insights, Dale. Thank you, Gary.